Council Member Linda Lee represents the 23rd Council District in Eastern Queens. She was elected to the Council in November 2021, the first, first, first Korean American woman ever elected to City Council. Before running her first campaign for office and winning, Linda was the president and CEO of Korean Community Services of Metropolitan New York. This was New York's first community-based social service organization focused on the Korean community. Its programs were a kind of bridge into full integration after immigration. Under Linda's leadership, the Obama White House named KCS a champion of change in 2014 for their work towards the Affordable Care Act. Linda also spearheaded the creation of the only state licensed Article 31 mental health clinic serving the Korean American community operating in New York. Everyone, please welcome New York City Council Member Linda Lee. All right, who came up with this order? Why do I go, have to go after Audrey over here? I have to admit, I secretly wanted to um, be a musician, um, but I only made it as far as praise team band, and that was it, so. <laughs> um, but thank you so much, Vivian. I'm also very nervous. It is very weird to be up here on stage, as opposed to in the audience at the nonprofit table, usually. Um, <laughs> in the back over there. Um, but it, I have to say, it is so amazing to be part of these ama amazing trailblazers who, I have to say, we're all women, number one. <laughs> and number two, it's interesting because we're all Korean American women in very not so typical fields that you would see Korean Americans in, which I think is great. Um, so I was asked to tell a story, and, and my story, I think, is not unlike many of yours. Um, I was born here. How many of you guys know where Elmira, New York is? Really? Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> um, I don't know who, or who told my family that that was a great place to immigrate to, but that's where we landed, in Elmira, New York. Um, and I grew up there for the first 10 years and moved to Long Island. Um, and lived there for about 20 years and then have been in Queens since 2009. And Queens. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, my father came over in the 70s. Uh, he got his master's in engineering from Ohio State University and to this day never, never misses, never misses a college football game to this day, I swear to God. And, you know, they, they took it upon themselves and said, you know, to make a better life for me and my sister, um, they started up a dry, cleaner, dry cleaning business. So they were small business owners, uh, faced a lot of discrimination, which I saw over the years, um, all to build a better life for me and my sister. Um, and I think the reason why I have such a heart for older adults and seniors also is because my grandma raised me, because we were the generation of the latchkey kids, where we were left at home alone um, to fend for ourselves. And, um, Towards the end of my grandmother's life, I was the one that was changing her adult diapers, clipping her toenails, giving her showers, um, and, and really sort of caring for her um, towards the end of her life. And I know we all have grandmas and parents that, that we can all relate to in the same way, that sacrifice so much. Um, and I thank my parents and my grandmother because it was because of them that our generation has been able to start to thrive, not just survive, right? Um, and it's crazy because uh, social work, you know, I, I started off in college thinking, okay, I'm gonna go into finance, go into investment banking, make lots of money. Um, and then I took a job before my senior year of college working for a camp for inner city kids from the Bronx. And it was that moment and that summer where I realized I need to and I want to, and I think my calling is to help people, I just don't know how. And 
through a friend uh, that I ran into, a church friend I hadn't seen in like 10 years. Don't judge me, I ran into her at a John Mayer concert, okay? <laughs> yes, I went to see John Mayer, okay? But I saw her at a concert and she's like, you know, there's this thing called social work and I think you should really look into going into social work. And I was like, what's social work? Um, and it's a field that is entirely dedicated to just helping people. Um, and so I looked into that, decided to go to school. And these are, these are careers and jobs that, you know, our parents never really talked to us about growing up. And it was through my work at KCS. And I have to say, I was a very typical Twinkie. <laughs> Twinkie, <laughs> yes. Twinkie slash banana, whatever you want to call it. Um, where, you know, I started off as like, a, you know, in the very high up position at KCS and I didn't speak the language. I was young and I was a female. And it was a very first gen organization. And um, it was challenging, I'm not gonna lie. It was challenging because um, I don't think I was necessarily taken as seriously. Um, and it took a long time for me to build those relationships with my colleagues who had been at the organization much longer, knew a lot more than I did, um, and really just were there to mentor and guide me. And um, it was really through working at KCS Okay, first of all, I just gotta say, I thought all politicians were horrible and corrupt people, right? <laughs> like the, when people say, oh, you're a politician, I'm like, Pugh. it's not, don't say the P word. It's, not, it's like a bad word, right? Um, but it was really through my work in the direct social services that I saw how important government is in how I deliver my services at KCS. For example, the city will dictate to me, um, you, you need to deliver services this way to your seniors at your senior center. For your Homebound Meals on Wheels program, you have to provide this number of calories for your meals. You have to provide, um, uh, you have to serve it in these microwavable containers, which cost more. And guess what? If you don't come from a place of understanding the immigrant community, people that don't speak English, um, a lot of these policies are not meant for us, right? And same thing. There's probably some white older man, no offense to the white men in here. Uh, <laughs> no offense, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry, table. Table number two, yeah, yeah, this whole table. <laughs> table number one, yay. Um, just make sure you give a lot of money later. <laughs> but um, no, so, but in all seriousness, um, the reason why I started our mental health clinic is because I have very close family and friends that have severe mental health illnesses, including bipolar schizophrenia, and no one in my family talks about it. There are no services in the community for people in our community that speak the same language and understand the culture. And so it dawned on me, wow, someone up in Albany is dictating how I deliver my services at a predominantly non-speaking immigrant Asian community in Flushing and if they don't understand what our issues are, and if no one is speaking up on behalf of our community, and if we don't have a seat at the table and a voice, these policies are not going to include us, right? So, so I realized, ah, there's a connection. I get it. This is why it's important. And it's not something that I ever really saw this is not ever something that I ever wanted to do or a field that I ever wanted to go into. And actually, I don't know how many of you know Congresswoman Grace Meng, but yes, she's amazing. Um, she was actually one of the first people that said, hey, you should run for office. And I was like, you are crazy. There is no way that I would ever do this. But it was really COVID. During COVID, we faced the most horrific experiences ever in our communities. And I know we've never been through COVID as a city and state or a nation or country or a world, but I was like, man, New York City, we gotta do better. Like, we gotta figure things out. And that was really finally what was the nail in the coffin that spurred me to run for office. We knocked on 30,000, more than 30,000 doors um, in our campaign, and it was very grassroots. We went door to door to door to door. What do you care about? What are your issues? I learned a lot about tree stumps, probably more than I ever wanted to learn about. <laughs> but it's amazing because for the very first time, and I can't believe this is the first time, we have a majority women-led city council. So, yes. So out of 51 council members, 31 of us are women. 
And for the very first time, we have a black speaker who is also a woman. And also, <laughs> because of this, we are now creating policies like universal um, childcare so that women can actually be in office and go to work, right, and serve their communities. And we have passed a package of legislation that will protect women's health care and women's rights and how to handle their body for years to come. So this is all stuff that would probably not have happened or been possible. And in my district in Queens, I'm the first woman and person of color to ever win that seat. There's never been a woman or person of color before. So it's crazy. Um, and myself and Julie Wan, she's also um, a fellow colleague of mine who's Korean American. She and I are the very, very first Koreans ever elected to city council. And it doesn't surprise me that we're women also. So I'll just say. Um, but I have to say, it's because of all the experience at, at KCS. And the one, th the one thing I want to leave you guys with is, um, I, during the campaign, they were asking, OK, so what is the thing that drove you to want to run? And I forgot about this story until um, I was putting together this, like, the, I don't know, the media folks were like, OK, we got to tell your story. And I remember one day during my, um, when my father was at his dry cleaner store, there was a woman who came in. And she, so my father had dry cleaned her, her, her um, jacket and the buttons were ruined. And she was in there screaming at him, yelling at him, being very derogatory. And he was trying to explain to her, listen, she's like, you know, I've brought it to other dry cleaners. There was never an issue. And he's like, well, then they didn't clean it the proper way because the chemicals and however it is, it would have happened regardless of where you took it. But she said, the most hateful comments to him, and I think because of an accent, and because of his accent, um, she treated him differently, you know? She treated him as less than. And I was in seventh grade, I was waiting for him to close up the store, and I saw that. And I have to say, my response was, I froze. I froze up and I felt, I went home, I took a shower and I started crying because I was like, I can't believe I didn't defend my dad. I can't believe I didn't stand up for him when I saw him getting yelled at. Sorry, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. Um, but it was that moment in time where I think I didn't realize it then, but that's sort of what spurred on this, me being a fierce advocate for the community and wanting to be a voice for the voiceless. And, um, And I have to say, um, I, think, I think that's why through those experiences, through my time serving at KCS, all the lessons I learned from the first gen community, um, that really is sort of what built up my advocacy and voice today. And so my job now, I think, is to really be a pipeline for future leaders and for people, I don't wanna be the first, I don't wanna be the last, right? There has to be more people that come after us, whether you're in the food industry, whether you're in entertainment, in TV, we gotta have more people and we gotta open the doors. And I've heard so many people on this stage who've gotten awards before, who have said the same thing, and I always admired that. And so I wanna to try to do that as much as I can. If any of your kids want internships, we're always looking for <laughs> interns. Um, <laughs> in government. Uh, so if they want to experience it, just let me know. But, um, you know, I think, I think our job is whatever industry fields we're in is to really open the doors and create that pathway for the next generation to come in and come on board. And so I just want to thank HJ for being such an amazing person to create this organization, which I remember when he first started it, to tell the stories of the Korean American community. And I just want to thank you so much because I really feel very humbled. I don't think I deserve to be up here, but um, I, I, I just really, really thank you guys and thank you so much for this. Thank you.